We are glowy and we grow light. Electrical lighting is responsible for 1.7 billion tons of CO2 emissions. It's 15% of global electricity consumption and more than 80% of humans are affected by light pollution. And in the meantime, nature has been through 3.8 billion years of research and development to find the most sustainable solution. It is the smartest and the cleanest factory on Earth. In nature, every waste is a resource for someone else. So Zeus Biomedis and Tanimide might have the solution we've overlooked about sustainable lighting. Because glowworms, fireflies, and more than 80% of marine organisms know exactly how to produce light biologically. So why not just take inspiration from them and change the way we produce, consume, and enlighten? Why can't we just grow our own light? And this is what we do at Glowy. We created a growing and living raw material, bioluminescence material, in order to reduce the environmental impact, to improve wellness thanks to the quality of this natural light, and to offer a lot of new design possibilities to revolutionize the lighting industry. Our light units can be found in two different ways. The first one is called Glow Event, and it's an ephemeral light to light temporal spaces, and it can light up to one week. The second one, is pipe light, is a continuous lighting system. There is no lifespan problems. As soon as you maintain it, then it will keep glowing. With that, we want to design more livable and sustainable cities for tomorrow. And soon, bioluminescence will replace electric lighting in the landscape to give visibility to enhance in public areas, on building facades, on parks and gardens, on underground, and so much more. So let me show you. You have here a casing. What's important to understand is that our light can take basically any shape, any kind of casing, because it's a liquid solution. It's a patented biological solution. So we can fill this kind of casing with our light and hear how it looks. So as you can see, bioluminescence is a very unique light, and the quality of light is amazing. And the wavelengths that it has also offers health benefits, such as relaxing and improving cognitive functions. That's how we can really reduce light pollution. Let me explain you how it works. So we synthesize some genes coding for bioluminescence inside squids. Then we insert into a lab-grown bacteria. And our main job at Glowy is to engineer those bacteria to make them more efficient in terms of light production. When we have the bacteria, we grow them, we mix them with nutrients, and then put it into this kind of transplant shells. Our bi biotech solution is here to disrupt the entire light value chain. It's about going from electrical to biological. Because a lot of solutions that exist today on the low consumption lighting market, like LEDs, they might consume less electricity, but they are made of rare metals. And extracting those rare metals from the ground is extremely pollutive, it's resource intensive, and it's also causing catastrophes worldwide. So to achieve that mission, we decided to focus on light installation and supply markets. So exactly like solar company did, we are partnering with energy providers. So we license to them our technology and they operate the system. For them, it's a great new business opportunity and for us, it's an amazing way to scale. Usually biotech companies take five to 10 years to have a first product on the market. We've managed after only one year to build this glow event product and now, in two years, we've sold more than 6,000 units for light installations. We're working with uh, big brands on that subject to sensitize it and to show them how we they can use bioluminescence in the industry. And I'm very proud to say that my team is waiting for me tonight at the Eiffel Tower at the first floor for one of our clients to have a bioluminescence installation. So events are great because they educate people, they raise consumer awareness, and they're also a good way to gain visibility. And thanks to that message that we're going to pass through that event, we've managed to uh, be featured on artists like TED or CNN. And this is a strategy to go from events to a revolution. And this is where pipelines come. So pipeline is a bioreactor. The, continuous, the, the, the microbes are continuously grown inside the system when you feed them, so there's no lifespan. And the cool things about the nutrients that we're giving them is that they're waste. As I mentioned, all our goal is to copy what nature is doing and to really close that loop. So we feed our microbe with waste coming from different kind of industries. And at the end, and as the output, we have an unlimited light resource and some neutral or valuable 100% organic uh, byproducts so that we can really close that loop. 
So we're continuing R&D to really fit with the needs of our lighting, but in the meantime, we are putting a first pipeline product on the market at the beginning of 2019 for the hospitality industry, for the wellness industry, in hotels and spas. This is a great way for us to both monetize R&D as events and to scale, to go from small scale to mid-scale and then improve the technology to fit with the needs that we're trying to achieve. So um, we have a very product-focused team. It's very interdisciplinary. We're working with five PGs and two engineers that rotate with design and business teams in order to really fit the client's needs and not just technically innovate, but really implement a, re a revolution in that industry. So circular economy is the way nature does business. And it is the way Glowy does business too. So visit glowy.com and join us in this illumination revolution today. Thank you. Okay, judges. Um, wow. Uh, this is the first time I've seen something <laughs> like this personally. So I have to ask you, do you have any competition or anybody trying to do either the same thing or using similar technologies? Well, so bioluminescence is a phenomenon that is uh, used in a lot of different labs for uh, genetic marking since like 30 years. So there's a lot of things on bioluminescence. But bioluminescence, as we use it as a way to light, really to enlighten, we're the only one doing that uh, in the world. And we can say that thanks to uh, the, the IP studies that we are doing. And that the, we have two patents on the solution and around 10 in preparation. So when we do that studies, we can really see that in what we're doing, assembling all these technologies together to make a su sustainable lighting, we're the only one doing it. And from the pictures you've shown us, it looks like most lightings are being used not as a way to eliminate the room, but just to yeah. add low intensity lights. Yeah. Is this the kind of the brightest that it gets or do you have plans on making it as strong as fluorescent or LED for existing types of lighting? So we don't mean to replace all kind of lighting. We really think that to make this uh, energetic revolution, you need to find the right source of energy at the right place. So bioluminescence is more about giving visibili visibility, enhancing something. So you're not going to replace it in your kitchen, for example, to cook. It's the light from the night. So our goal is to replace all these uses of, of light, uh, as I mentioned, so uh, uh, building facades, parks and gardens, communication, street furniture. Um, and once we've done that, we really think that we are going to impose a way of thinking differently about lighting. Because what we figure out is that since five years with LEDs, uh, the um, light intensity have increased by two. Uh, because so it's less expensive, it consumes less, so we put more, and then the intensity goes higher, and then the problem is getting bigger. So the goal is really, we're working closely with municipalities uh, because they, they realize that they can really rethink the way they illuminate their cities. So our goal is to really go on onto that vision, to go with step by step, and to really make uh, bioluminescence a self-evident solution for a lot of users. So can you help me understand that business case for the city or the hotel chain? Um, how far away are you from, I mean, you said 6,000 units, I'm trying to quantify, that sounds pretty good, but as you said, as a, uh, over a, a relatively short period. But equally, there's a sort of nagging thing at the back of one's head, which is, well, if this works today, why isn't a city signing up and using it? Um, yeah. to so why are we not outside now? It's because of two reasons. So first, we're still working on the intensity to go higher. We've already multiplied by 20 in the last uh, two years. We know that we have a huge potential because we're working with, uh, with organisms that are like 100 times more intense than the one that we're using. So we just need to implement them in the technology. So the first reason is intensity because today it's perfect for indoor lighting. That's why we're launching on the like hospitality industry because it works for indoor. Um, and the second reason is about um, the cost because today we've, uh, same thing, we've decreased the cost by like 80% in the last year. But to be competitive in the urban landscape, we need to decrease the cost more and it's the cost will decrease thanks to the nutrients that we are working on. Today, um, for the hospitality industry, the, the prices are okay because we are uh, really offering a, a new value proposition on, on a source of light that cannot be uh, done by LEDs. But we know that to go to that uh, urban outdoor things, we need to still lower the cost and that's why we still are working on R&D. But the goal is really to have this middle market to improve the technology and to really be focused on uh, what clients need. And, and when do you think you, you reach that tipping point of lowering the cost enough? How much further yeah. have you got to go? Another 80% or? So it's around, I will say, one year and a half 
to have the first pilot version that will be competitive. Um, it's, as I mentioned, it's really about working on the nutrients. So we're working on new solutions that will uh, like, uh, be less expensive. And, and the, the thing is also about uh, finding the right uh, amount of maintenance uh, to lower the costs between the, the, the nutrients that the bacteria needs to light properly and the fact that uh, it's, uh, it's cool to have biomass enough, biomass at the end, because then you can revitalize it. So it's a matter of finding the right proportion. And that will also take like, part into the cost thing, cost, cost effectiveness. I wanted to understand better what you're actually selling. So yeah. you're selling, you talked about installations. Yeah. Are you, is, do you have to actually go somewhere and do the installation? Is it just this product? Is it just the, the yeah. liquid or the bacteria? What is it? So when we talk about installations, it's like we're doing some pedag ped pedagogical installations. So we're working with a lot of different clients on different sectors to explain to them how can we, um, can we use biomedicines in their industries. If I take an example, tonight uh, we, we are working with Vinci Energies, which is one of our big, biggest clients, um, and we're meeting all of their clients um, because we, we figure out that first is a good way to uh, monetize what we've done and it's also a good way to finance R&D. But um, when you have such a disruptive system, because it's not about replacing a bulb by a glowy, it's, it's about the whole value chain. So we really need to explain how, and working with the, the people that are already going to operate the system, uh, it's really important. So the more we can share with them about what we're doing, the more they can easily um, imagine how they can be to industries. So basically, we we, we're doing like scenographies, bioluminescence immersive scenographies, um, and explaining to them what's happening. So this is a necessary step. I'm just wondering how is, yeah. is this scalable in the long term? Well, we, we don't think of it as a scalable model. But the th great thing is that we know that in this ephemeral lighting systems, we also have a great advantage that is there is no infrastructure at all. So for now, we're only using GEDA for events. So it's not about scaling that model. It's more about like uh, communication matters. But uh, for example, if you think about using light in festivals when there is no plugs and, and it's very complicated to bring electricity, this is a perfect solution because you only need light for three days. So you can just put the bioluminescent light here and then it will light. So there's also kind of uses in that way, but we're really focusing on finding the right model and the right solution for that sustainable system because it's also part of a mission. Um, we don't want to become a, uh, like an agency, an event agency. We really want to become this raw material furniture that will change the way we light. I think it's a, a really wonderful project. I think uh, projects like this are much needed. Um, and I'd love to see it succeed. <coughs> it feels very much to me like a, you're in a, still in a research phase with kind of showcasing and events because it's got this kind of quirky aspect you haven't quite resolved yet. But um, uh, your kind of, the kind of issue you have is to get that commercial, uh, you know, the, the commercialization of that cracked. So how long have you got, you know, you've got quite a big team, are they all kind of part-time or what, are you funded or? In, in terms of team, sorry, I, I didn't. There's really quite a few on the team, are you funded to date or? Are we funded today? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, so um, for now we've in like the past two years, we've gathered 2.5 million euros. Uh, both from uh, investors, uh, from business angels at the beginning, from uh, Inno Energy, which is an investor in, in the in energy industry. And we've also did um, an equity crowdfunding campaign, gathering around 600 private uh, individuals, uh, which is also a great way for us to democratize the technology. So this is a part for the equity, and then we've, uh, we've gathered that with public funding. So basically, we've, the last fundraising was two years ago, and we still have a year and a half to go. Um, to really develop the, the systems, we are making a lot of, uh, so biotech and R&D is long. So we need like maybe cycles of like eight to 10 months to really have results. So we are in like at, at the end of that second circle that we're doing in terms of R&D. So now we are getting results. That's why we are, we are launching a product um, in, in January. And then we, we we're gonna fundraise again to really scale that business. Have you, um, have you explored uh, wearable safety recreational applications because it seems like there's a lot yeah of, like they can act as lead generation or exploratory or yeah. advertising frankly for what you're doing yeah, yeah so that's a good question because uh, I, I mentioned two technologies but we actually develop and not the technologies that it's a bit different because we use the proteins that our microbes are, are um, producing to have this system that uh, basically replace you know those, those bracelets chemiluminescence things so it's about B2, more B2C product and uh, on-demand need for lighting. 
for that technology, we co-develop it with, um, with partners. Uh, so they finance it. So we're working to uh, improve our formulation for them to fit to their needs. So it's the third part that we're developing today. Like a bioluminescent light stick or yeah. bioluminescent clothing for yeah, safety. Yeah, there is a lot of, a lot of application in cosmetics, in sports, in leisure, in packaging. There's a lot of different things that we can explore with that. All right, I think we're pretty much out of time. So give it up for Thank Chloe. You very much.